Hi everyone, welcome to Torah On Demand. I'm Rabbi Yael Rydberg. This week we begin the longest book of the Torah, the book of Bamidbar, named as Numbers in English, but in Hebrew, Bamidbar means in the wilderness, referring to the unfolding of the people's 40 years of wandering before arriving in the Promised Land. In the aftermath of Sinai, the narrative picks up almost exactly where Exodus left off. Having constructed the tabernacle, the Israelites now take a census of the people before entering the land. The counting of the Israelites is meant to show that the people are prepared for the wild space open before them. There might be potential for hunger and thirst, danger and deprivation, but there also might be miracles where beasts suddenly speak, water comes forth from rocks, and sustenance falls from the sky. In Hebrew, there are two words for counting, limnot and lispor. Limnot is the same root structure as minyan, the quorum of 10 people needed for prayer. Lispor is the same root structure as sfira, as in sfirat haomer, the counting of the days between Passover and Shavuot. Limnot connotes that each number is important unto itself. Lispor imagines a process of counting that leads to something bigger. Rashi teaches that it was because of God's love for the people individually and as a collective that they were counted, because they were dear to God, he says, because God counted them often. God is likened to a teacher with a class on a field trip who counts to make sure no one gets left behind and also to a parent who gazes repeatedly at each of her children until they complain, what? Yet we are not just numbers, as the verse says. Lift up the head of every person in the community, says verse two. Take account of each of them as every single person matters. If you are counted, then you count. Later, in a seeming innocuous verse, the text explains that the people encamped troop by troop, each person under his degel, his standard. Further delineation is needed to teach that the each person was in exactly the right place before setting out on the journey. And considering that the holiday of Shavuot, which is celebrated next week, when we commemorate the giving and receiving of the Torah, each person would then be in the exact right place for revelation. The Ger Rebbe, Rabbi Yehuda Leib Alter of Ger, understood this to mean that each person must be in the right place to receive Torah in the open space of the wilderness. The giving and the receiving of Torah is understood as the ultimate expression of covenant making and knowing who we are. If we try to be someone else or somewhere else, the power of our sacred tradition may elude us. If we are each under our own standard amidst our people, we can identify the source of our individuality within the larger story of the Jewish people. The Midrash teaches that the Torah was given in the open wilderness so that no one could claim it as their own possession. At the same time, the rabbis offer the understanding that when the Torah was given, every person received it according to his or her strength and even according to their understanding. The Torah has always been understood to be that which can open us to transformation, just like the open spaces offer no set boundaries to contain our imagination. As we once again anticipate revelation, may each of us be counted in community and may we be open to receiving Torah according to what we need and who we are. Shabbat shalom. See you next time. Thanks for joining me.